Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Ichimi. Recently, a student from University Tunku Abdul Rahman has been crowned Adobe Certified Associate 2021 World Champion, beating 65,000 other contestants. And if you're currently using a MediaTek-powered device, you should update your security level ASAP. So find out the reason why on today's episode Ichimi. So without further ado, let's get started. The last time we talked about the security firm Checkpoint Research, it was about how cryptocurrency scammers were using Google Ads to target their victims. But this time, Checkpoint is back with more worrying news, but this time it involves MediaTek processors. You can check out their full post on the specifics of how they did it, but in short, most new MediaTek processors have a special AI processing unit and an audio digital signal processor that use a custom 10 silica X Tensa microprocessor architecture. The folks over at Checkpoint Research though used a rooted Redmi Note 9 with a MediaTek Dimensity 800U in it and found that it was possible to bypass the security feature in place. By carrying out what's known as a local privilege escalation attack via an app, Checkpoint Research managed to access the data that went through the APU and DSP. In short, this meant that you could eavesdrop on the device owner. The good news is though is that the hack was never spotted in the wild. Instead, Checkpoint Research had to reverse engineer the Android API responsible for communications with the audio processor and the firmware on the DSP before being able to take advantage of the vulnerabilities in MediaTek's code. The even better news though is that the researchers at Checkpoint claim MediaTek is aware of the vulnerabilities and have since patched them out to their October security level patch. This means that if you're currently using a smartphone with a MediaTek processor in it, you should check for updates and download the latest available Android security patch level. Every year, the company Certipod organizes the Adobe Certified Associate World Championship, which is a global competition built to test the design skills of students around the world with Adobe suite of tools such as Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. This year, it was held as an online competition and coming up top is Malaysia's Danny Si Wei Chun. The competition was held from the 16th of November till the 18th and Danny Si was one of the 51 finalists from over 65,000 submissions to take part in it. Students participating will create a design project for one of Certipod's non-profit clients and this year it was Limitless Solution, a US-based non-profit that makes affordable and accessible prosthetics for children. Judges consisted of folks from Certipod, Limbitless and Adobe's own experts and the top prize consists of US$7,000, a medal of achievement, a certificate and a trophy. Danny ended up on top beating out the 50 other participants in the finals with his submission. Having previously won the 2020 Adobe Certified Associate Championship Malaysia, the digital animation graduate from Utah's Faculty of Creative Industry was given 6 hours to meet Limbitless requirements and their brand aesthetics while also showing their use of Adobe Creative Cloud programs. Second prize went to Brazil's Gustavo Souza, while the third place went to Gina Anjarizgi Amalia from Indonesia. It has been two and a half years since DG and Cellcom first announced their intention to merge together to become Malaysia's largest mobile operator. But after a number of stumbling blocks which saw the original attempt fail before being revived in April this year, along with concerns over a potential monopoly, the two have finally formally submitted their application for the merger to the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission. The application to MCMC would involve the formation of a Cellcom DG Berhad and encompasses DG Telecommunication Sendiran Berhad and Cellcom Asiata Berhad feelings of their two parent companies, DG.com Berhad and the Aksiata Group, show that they have begun talks with the MCMC to kick off the merger assessment procedure according to their guidelines and regulations. DG.com has also released a statement since to inform that the merger involving their subsidiary DG Telecommunication Sendiran Berhad has been been received by the MCMC. The proposed merger will now need to be approved by the MCMC along with Securities Commission Malaysia and shareholders of the two parent companies involved. The adoption of electric vehicles in Malaysia is steadily progressing. Petronas Dagan Berhad, also known as Petronas's downstream retailer subsidiary, has signed a memorandum of understanding with Mercedes-Benz Malaysia and also EV Connection to deploy DC fast EV chargers in Petronas station by H1 of 2022. For those of you guys who don't know, EV Connections is the operator of Jom Charge, an EV charging network here in Malaysia. PDB plans to install fast EV chargers at 5 Petronas stations at first as a pilot phase. 
This will hopefully enable coverage between the North-South Expressway and part of the East Coast Expressway. Petronas first started implementing EV charging stations in 2017 with Charge EV by Green Tech Malaysia. This network did not include any DC charging points, however. DC charges are generally faster and they are therefore more suited to expressways where users don't have a lot of time to charge. In turn, this MOU is meeting the demand of the faster charges for long-distance travel in Malaysia. And thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like our video if you liked it and subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and also click on the notification bell icon so you won't miss any of our future videos. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!